Well, here are my top ten necessary, albeit not sufficient, conditions for being a good rock group. First and foremost, you've got to be a group and not an individual. You can gauge how healthy the contemporary scene is by looking at the top 20 and counting up the number of singles by groups and by individuals. If two thirds or less are by groups or by individuals, we're in huge trouble uh, because individuals tend to be uh, just a, a medium for, uh, for corporate rock. It's groups, that good groups make good rock music. Second, and this is critical, you've got to have a good name. You know, how can you take a group seriously if it's called Maroon 5? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even before you listen, you know this is a catastrophe. <laughs> or the feeling. You've got to have a declarative name, like Clash and Step, uh, Step Little Fingers, or a quirky name, like Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, or, or Arctic Monkeys. Bring a sea power, perfect pop group. It's quirky, it projects maritime power, it projects aggression. Thirdly, you've got to be from an obscure area of hinterland or marginal place. Unfortunately, you can't be from Toronto. You've got to be an outsider. All the great pop music is performed by outsiders. You've got to be from Seattle. You've got to be from Minnesota, Prince, you know, Tom Dillon, that sort of thing. You've got to be from Wales. Not, not a cheap feature. So, British Sea Power qualifies for that because they're from Cumbria. Nothing's from Cumbria. Cumbria is almost Scotland. They do wrestling up there, that's what I did. So it's very rare that good bands come from mainstream bands. Third, you should have some personal mystery or tragedy or eccentricity or quirk to you that differentiates you from So, you know, the Manic Street Preacher's a great story, eh? You get up one morning and the guitar player just left. Still haven't found them ten years later. You know, this is kind of trivializing Spinal Tap, you know, the famous business, the, drum, the drummer's always exploding and dying, mm -hmm. you know? Or you can have some severe personality quirks or personality things, like the, the Happy Mondays guys. Or very eccentric, and the British Sea Power, they're very, very, you know, very eccentric people, they expect eccentric taste. They don't play gigs in normal spots, they don't play arenas or what have you, they choose obscure spots, the highest pub in England, the oldest pub in England. They just put, they play in the very, very, very odd spots. Fifth, and this is a real tricky one, you can't be too popular or accessible because then the club gets too big. So you can't be too successful commercially, but you've got to be commercial enough uh, so you can eat. So British Sea Power, I'm worried. They haven't had any top 10, 20 singles, so that, that for me is perfect. You know, if you have a top 20 single, you're in danger. However, the last album got to number 10, I'm worried. Now, my all-time favorite single, in a certain way, I have a copy of it, never charted. And that to me is a definition of a classic, a song that's never charted. And that's, uh, for those of you in the room, who remember Another Girl, Another Planet, are the only ones, which has been covered by about 20 different groups. It's a fantastic song, uh, but it, it, it never charted. Sixth, you gotta, you got to be a group that has a cult following or creates an engaged relationship with your audience. So most uh, uh, groups that qualify for, for, for me have a, a loyal uh, following that, that follows them from concert to concert to concert. Uh, New Order put out a, a, a CD this, uh, this winter, live in Glasgow, I think it is. Anyway, they were interviewing uh, audience members and what have you. And these were groups that had gone to 45 New, Answer, New Order concerts in the, last, in the last year, and they were bitching and complaining because New Order kept playing the same songs. I just thought that was just, was just wonderful. But of course, the, the famous uh, 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 3rd Battalion the Sea Power that follows them from, from concert to concert. Very loyal, very loyal. Seventh, you've got, you got to look ordinary. you got to not rely on the phenomena. So, you can't marry a movie star. You can't be a famous person. You can't live in a castle. You can't be a vegetarian. You can't be a Scientologist. <laughs> you can't be otherwise better known for who you are or who you're sleeping with than for what you do. you got to be known for what you do. A, and this is in career building, you've got to get past the, second, the dreaded second albums. How many groups put a fantastic first album, and then their second album, what do they do in their second album? They complain about how awful it is being a successful rock star. That is the end of the career. You've got to, get, you've got to continue playing music through the second, and of course, through the music of time. Nine, for my taste, you've got to have a university connection, or else what the hell is my purpose? <laughs> You've got to have a research connection. Maybe even a term in an art school will do. At least they'll give you some sense of what style's all there. 
But better still, you have a liberal arts undergraduate university in a small town in a small little part of the country. <laughs> and so that you'll at least be able to be literate in your songwriting. You can make historical references. You know what's going on in the world. You can give interesting titles. And give. So I mean, a uh, bit of sea power, just, just even a song title. So they, you know, New Lucifer. You want to, I mean, No Lucifer, you can't, you can't understand that song unless you take classical history. Uh, Larson B, which I played last night, our Anson was at the house. It's a song about an iceberg. Uh, uh, and lastly, the group's got to be guitar based and it's got to be loud. It's got to have an original, distinctive sound. The, the singer's voice has got to be instantly, instantly recognizable. You, they got to be better live than on stage, and they got to respect their audiences. I tell you, uh, I was, I saw Beck this summer, and my, my son, one of my sons was still pissed off at that concert because of how abusive Beck was in the audience. He didn't care. You got to have, you got to care for your audience as they get played loud, etc., etc. You can't rely too much on technology. And how it all should look like is this. Let's just listen to one cut. And we'll come back. Hopefully it's loud. <laughs> Ostensibly a drinking song it has a wonderful uh, phrase at one time: "Beer is not death. Beer is not life. It just tastes good, especially tonight." How can one deny that? But it's not a, it's a drinking song only on one level. It's just a song about integration of immigrants into England. The context of the song is the is the uh, wave of East European immigrants into, into England and the advent of the country's entry into the EU. Unlike most other continental countries, which didn't allow the East European immigrants in, most notably France. 
hence the songs uh, references, as you probably picked up the Vistula and Carpathians and that sort of thing. Uh, the references to crossing Poland's uh, Vistula River and the Carpathian Mountains, which straddle seven or eight of these European countries. The backup singers who were not part of the group, <laughs> uh, they're uh, again kind of a quirky thing that they, that they would do. Uh, the, this is the London Bulgarian Choir, so it's some good Bulgarian singers singing uh, uh, the waving flags. The, the song's all is doubly ironic because uh, East Europe, for, 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 for many young people in England, uh, you think of it in the reverse way uh, because of cheap flights and what have you uh, uh, to, to Prague and to uh, Budapest. If you, you know, if you've been in Prague in the last four or five years, you'll see massive numbers of, of Brits uh, wandering through the streets along the Charles River uh, because you can fly to Prague for 10 quid and you know, be a, 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 a leader and that sort of thing. So it's a kind of a double, uh, doubly engaged uh, song. But anyway, that's, that's that bit of sea power and that's the end of my talk. I'm happy to answer any questions.